ओके टुडे आर सिविक्स क्लास स्टार्टेड विथ स्टेट एंड सावरनिटी दिस इज द चैप्टर टू before going to start state and sovereignty we will discuss something about uh, introduction of political science the term political science or politics is derived from the greek word polis which means city state hence the subject matter of political science is study of city states this subject was developed by the greek political philosopher plato aristotle and moreover aristotle developed this political science systematically that's why he was known as father of political science who is the father of political science father of political science aristotle aristotle is the father of political science he developed political science in systematic manner he wrote the text politics it is like bible of the political science in this subject he clearly mentioned what is the subject matter of political science how people are formulated government government having how many organs legislature executive judiciary what type of powers enjoyed by legislature executive judiciary that means how the powers are separated among the organs of government what is the constitution what is the justice equality liberty he clearly mentioned 5th and 4th century bc only that's why he got credit to as a father of political science now finally the subject matter of political science is nothing but city states already we discussed because the term political science is derived polis word which means city states city states are nothing but uh, present state in the greek period the present state word or state meaning term is not available at greek period whereas they treated state as city states all the city states are very small in size small in population later we will discuss whereas the subject matter of political science is state so here let's go with the state and sovereignty so under this chapter we will cover introduction of the state introduction introduction of state meaning of state definition of definitions of state definitions of state and essential elements of state essential elements of state finally apart from this we will cover relations between relations between state and other associations state and other associations state and other associations. after completion of the state segment we will go with sovereignty sovereignty is one of the essential element of state okay we will see what is sovereignty and what are the features of sovereignty what are the different types of sovereignty okay first we will go with introduction of state already we know the concept of state developed in ancient greek period as city states example of the city states are athens sparta macedonia milan there are 
so many city states at the 4th and 5th century bc here the study of city states is nothing but the state actually nothing but political science it's in every city state having three types of people three types of people city states consist three types of people one is citizens second one is slaves third one is aliens there are the three category of people in, lived in every state understood that's why here the study of citizen and his functions role study of slaves and his role and the study of alien is also subject matter of state subject matter of political science at the time so that's why greek people did not have any idea about modern states they only have idea on city states okay what about modern term of state who used the term state in modern times here in 16th century ad machiavelli he was the italian political thinker italian political thinker he wrote the famous book the prince in this famous book he used the term state term state in modern terminology in modern way according to the machiavelli the state is nothing but power system power system he was the first person who used the modern way of the state meaning e in 16th century ad in his famous book the prince okay so according to the machiavelli the meaning of state is power system later on so many political philosophers used the term state in different way so jean bodin jean bodin he used the term state in republic state is republic state is republic according to jean bodin so that's why whatever the view of state they concluded the meaning of state is power system and the republic in modern way that's why we will go with meaning meaning of the state meaning of the state so already we know the state term used by the machiavelli first time and the term of the state the term state is derived from the status status word which means society which means society the beginning they used this meaning whereas in broad way the meaning of state is nothing but city states city states hence the meaning of city state is concluded as overall development of the individual is nothing but state that means individual how the individual is relation with the environment how the individual relation with the other organizations and associations okay so this is called meaning of state let's go with the definitions of state definitions of state there are so many definitions of state we observed out of them very prominent in examination point of view very simple we will cover the first and the blunt chilies definition blunt chili blunt chili he was the one of the prominent uh, pol political thinker he defined state in very simple manner 
स्टेट इज पोलिटिकली ऑर्गेनाइज टीटर पोलिटिकली ऑर्गेनाइज people of a definite territory territory state is a political politically organized people of a definite territory what it means the each and every state which consists definite territory which is a consist people the people should belonging to politically organized that is why state is politically organized people of a definite territory and the second one is that woodrow wilson woodrow wilson he was the one of the american previous that means american president and he defined political science in very simple manner and related with the blunt chili then according to the woodrow wilson state is people organized state is a people organized by law organized by law within definite territory within definite territory definite territory so what is the definition given by abraham lincoln prominent um, and uh, ex president of america he defined very clear state is a people organized by law that means the people are there they should organized by law and that they reside in definite territory so there are the, there are so many definitions out of them the two are very prominent that's why in examination point of view if you mention definition you should choose out of them any one of them okay there are let's go with the next one is that essential elements of state essential elements of state essential elements of state so before before going to start with essence start with essential elements we observe the definition if we clear if we clearly observe the definitions we concluded each and every state each and every state having four essential elements how many are there four essential elements one is that population or people population or people and next one is the territory and third one is that government and last but not least very powerful is that sovereignty sovereignty there are four essential elements are observed one is people or population another one is territory another one is government and finally sovereignty apart from this recently one more essential element elements added that was international recognition international recognition so that's why basically there are four essential elements and recently added one is that international recognition we will cover one by one let's go with the first element is that first element of the state is that population or people
essential elements of state it is a very very important question in examination point of view it is also previous one okay already we know there are four essential elements people or population territory government sovereignty okay let's go with one, first one people or population right you can imagine or not say without the people there is no state because the desert which does not have any people this land is not considered as a state that's why each and every state should require some of the people that's why it is the primary and the first essential element first essential element of the state people or population is the first essential elements of the state element of the state and also without the people without the people no state is existed no state is existed and no state is survived that's why we cannot imagine the state without the population and like the same example you coded here if you interested the desert which is having land and which is sometimes which land is fertile also but there is no people here this type of land is not considered as a state that's why people are essential for the state here basically how many people are required for the state what is the ideal population of the state in this matter there is no clarity among the political thinkers okay clear all of you that's why we will discuss ancient city state and modern states in ancient city state all states are very small in size small in size of population and th there is no uh, clarity about the that means there is no understanding about the size of the population in ancient city state plato said plato he was the teacher of aristotle who is the father of political science according to the plato the ideal population of the state is 5040 5040 that means the state according to the plato what is the state city state is the state the state is uh, uh, required 5040 people only according to the plato the ideal population of the state is 5040 whereas russo russo o u s s e a u russo said 10000 population is the ideal population of the state plato said 5040 russo said 10000 population is ideal population of the state whereas aristotle our father of political science what aristotle opinion about the population of state according to the aristotle the state which is city state required not two more not two less that means medium quantity of the population is required so two more population is dangerous two less population also dangerous according to the aristotle it is a scenario of the ancient city state that's why we concluded all the city states are very small in size whereas in modern times if you observe the modern states 
some states are having huge population, some states are having less population. The, they both are considered as a state. Here the size of the population is doesn't matter. You can observe, some are having huge population. They are suffering from the population, like China. At present there are 143 crore population is there in China. It is the world first populous country in the populous country. China is the world populous country. And the second one is that India, you know very well. At present, the Indian population is that 138 crore. That means some countries are having huge population, the quantity of the population is very high. And apart from this, besides this, there are some less populous countries like Vatican City, Vatican City, 893, that means below the 1000, 1000 below only. And Nauru, sorry, Nauru, is the 10,000 population. That means, we observed one side, huge populous countries also existed, another side less populous countries also existed. Both are considered as states in modern times. That's why here what I concluded, the size of the population is doesn't matter. How much population is doesn't matter. The quality of the population is essential. If, for example, one family consists of five members, they all are lazy one, they are all are not interested to any work, to do any work, and they all are not interested to contribute their help to the country, then automatically there is no use of such a family. Whereas, the another family which consists of three members, the three are educated, well cultured, they render their help to the country, then they are useful for the development of country. That means we concluded size of the population, quantity of the population is not important here, the quality of the population is important. The people who are literated, the people are well educated, the people are committed to do anything to the country, they are the essential for the development of country. This is why first and the population and the people as essential elements, we cover all those things. Okay, once again I repeat, people is the first essential element of the state. Without the people, we cannot imagine the state. No land, that means no land without people is considered as state. And this people, are in different size in different countries, whereas both are considered as state. That's why size of the population is not important. What is important? Quality of the population is important. This is the first essential element of the state. Let's go with the second element. Second element is the territory. Territory. Territory means what? Geographical area. Second element is the territory. The sec this is the second element. You can mention like this, no problem at in examination. Second essential element of the state is territory. So territory includes what? Territory means what? A geographical area. Geographical area of the state. The geographical area of the state is nothing but territory. Every geographical area, nothing but territory, consists of land part and water part and also space. The three elements are in existed each and every territory. 
So first one land in this forest also there, mountains also there, rivers, lakes, they all under comes uh, land area of the geographical area. And the, what about the water resources? You know that each and every country surrounded with some, some water or seas or what about ocean? Here each and every country having right on 12 nautical miles. 12 nautical miles. This 12, up to the 12 nautical miles the water quantity, water area under comes geographical area of the state, geographical boundaries of the state. And the space, the space which is on land of the state, this is also under comes the territory. So that's why territory consists of forest, mountains, rivers, lakes, resources, and water, and also space. So this is called territory and here without the territory, is it required the territory to the state? Yes. Territory is very essential because without the territory, no state is existed. Means each and every state requires some size of the territory. The territory requires fixed geographical boundaries. Now for example, nomadic tribes, nomadic tribes, they are the tribes who are traveling around the globe, they did not settled in a single area and single territory, fixed territory, they are always roaming around the globe, around the world and that type of people who are nomadic people, nomadic tribes are not considered as states. They are not considered as state. The people who are nomadic people or nomadic tribes are not considered the state because they does not have fixed territory. Fixed territory. That means what we concluded? The people who required fixed territory for recognizing as state. That is why fixed territory is important. At the same time as population, in the matter of territory also, there is no clarity. That means, how much territory is required? Is it huge territory is required or less territory is required? There is no clarity among the political thinkers. Whereas in ancient time, city-states, we already know all the city-states are very small. Small in population, and small in size of the area. That's why no problem at all at the time of ancient Greek city state. Whereas in modern times, whereas in modern times, we observed there are very largest countries in the world and very smallest countries in the world. For example, Russia is a world largest country in the area and also Canada, China, they are the largest countries. Apart, besides this, there are small size of the countries also there like Vatican City, Vatican City, Monaco, Nauru, they are the less size of the country in the matters of area, whereas both are treated as state. Both the huge, that means largest countries in the area also treated as a state and smallest area countries also treated as state at modern time. That's why the size of the area, like size of the population is not important. The quality of the area is important. For example, we have 10 acres of land. This is not fertile one. We are unable to cultivate on the, in this land. Is it usable for us? There is no at all. There is not at all usable for us. Whereas we have two acre of land. This is very fertile land and cultivated land. It is usable for us. 
that is why size of the land is not important here here quality of the land is important the country which is having resources then the resources can be useful to the development of the country otherwise there is no development of the country so that's why the country should the territory should requires rich resources rich natural resources so that is very very important so that's why second essential element of the state is territory let's go with the third essential element government third essential element is government so government is the third essential element third essential element of the state right so what is the government is government is important to the state and what is the role of government what type of government should be there and what type of uh, branches in government we will discuss so let's go government is the agency agency of state government is the agency of state with this government the state can express his will and wish the state objectives can be fulfilled by government organs that means government is one organ government is one element agency through this the state can express his opinion his will his ideas his objectives that's why without the government the state cannot function it is a invisible thing government state is the invisible thing it did not appear to us we never seen the government state whereas the agency of the state that is government is a visible thing we observed the government activities we participated government in democracy like this government is the agency which provides all the objectives all the activities of the state to the people okay so let's go with the government as agency of state here some political philosopher explained government as brain and heart of the state it is like brain and heart of the state without this the state cannot function that's why government is very very essential to the state so how the government can function government can function through his organs so government having three organs organs of government organs of government government having how many organs three organs one is legislature legislature another one is the executive executive i'll write once again very clear legislature second one is the executive third one is judiciary there are three organs of government through this three organs of the government the government express the state objectives okay so here the legislature what is the objective of the legislature law making the objective of the legislature is law making and the objective or the duty of the executive is that law implementation implementation and third one judiciary the function of the judiciary is that law adjudication law adjudication the function of the judiciary is law adjudication legislature law maker 
or its duty is law making executive's duty is that law implementation which is made by legislature judiciary the duty of the judiciary is law adjudication law interpretation if any problem arises while making the law while implementation of the law the judiciary can interfere and explain or analyze the law the duty is called as adjudication if any problem dispute or arises between the legislature and executive while implementing while making the judiciary can interfere and adjudicate the law this is a, of the law adjudication so that's why government having three organs legislature executive judiciary and here there are different types of government so based on the nature of the state governments are different types so very prominent types of governments are parliamentary form of government parliamentary form of government and second one is that presidential form of government presidential form of government and third one is that unitary government unitary government and fourth one is that federal government federal government so there are very prominent types of government we will discuss in last chapter of government types of government are organs of government and organs of government parliamentary form of government so these uh, governments types of governments are adopted each and every state based on their nature based on their requirement for example india is parliamentary government india is a federal government and sometimes they are also combined together for example if you take britain as example britain is a parliamentary form of government along with unitary form of government if you take america as example america is a presidential form of government along with federal government so what is the meaning of the these type of government in simple manner i will explain here parliamentary government the government which is formulated from the parliament is called as parliamentary government that means there is a parliament from this parliament government originated that's why there is no there is a relation between parliament and government here the government is ultimately responsible to the parliament so this is called parliamentary form of government the government which is originated which is created which is formulated from the parliament is called as parliamentary form of government where is presidential form of government in the presidential form of government there is a parliament there is a government but the government did not coming from the parliament that's why there is no relation between parliament and government here there is a relation in parliamentary form of government the governments are formulated or derived from the parliament for example in india for example in britain whereas in presidential form of government the parliament the government which is not formulated by the parliament here parliament is separated it was elected directly by the people the government also elected directly by the people there is no relation between parliament and presidential that government led by president not by the parliament that's why this government is called as presidential government whereas unitary form of government it is a one type of government they both are based on the relation between relation between parliament and executive that means legislature and executive these two type of governments derived or formulated based on the relation between legislature and executive okay if the relation is existed parliamentary government if the relation is not existed presidential government these two type of governments are derived based on the division of power division of power
division of powers okay based on division of powers here first we will take with unitary form of government unitary form of government the government which is one this government rule throughout the country is called as rule by one rule by one one government one government can rule throughout the country that means provincial government or state government may be existed may not be existed if they existed also the provincial government depends on one central government that is unitary form of government whereas in federal government here there are two governments provincial government also existed besides the union government that means there are division of powers decentralization of powers between union government and state government or provincial government so this is the federal government the term federal is derived from the feudus latin word which means to contract contract between whom union government and state government for what they are making making contract for division of powers what type of powers enjoyed by union government or central government what type of powers enjoyed by state government or provincial government this is clearly mentioned in federal government so these the, they are the different types of government and we will under we discussed government segment government element of the state so i thought i hope you understood there are four essential elements out of them government is the brain and heart of the state without the government the state cannot functioning the state can function through the government only the government can function through its organs okay there are three organs legislature and legislature executive judiciary let's go last but not least the essential element is sovereignty the fourth essential element is sovereignty very very important so newly added this concept in our syllabus last year that's why we will concentrate on sovereignty as element as independent subject matter later on okay so it is the fourth essential element fourth essential element and also it is a very powerful important important and powerful element prominent element of the state so it is like life of the state it is like life of the state means without life our body is treated as useless dead body whereas here as like as same here the state without the sovereignty is like dead body that's why it is like life of the state very very important element sovereignty so what is mean by sovereignty the term sovereignty is derived from the the term sovereignty is derived from the latin word latin word superanus which means what supreme power which means supreme power means the sovereignty means supreme power supreme power means full authority final authority apex authority who enjoy here the state alone there are so many associations already we discussed out of them the state alone enjoy the supreme authority supreme power named on sovereignty no other associations enjoyed this power only state enjoyed the sovereignty power so the meaning of sovereignty is supreme power supreme power mean on what supreme power on citizens supreme power over on citizens of the state and subjects nothing but associations associations of the state the supreme power enjoyed the state on citizens who are lived in state and the subjects 
nothing but associations existed in the state so this is why the state enjoyed the control or full authority on the citizens and subjects in the state there are two aspects in sovereignty how many aspects two aspects one is internal aspect another one is external aspect internal aspect aspect and external aspect let us try to understand what is the internal aspect and what is the external aspect as internal aspect the supreme power enjoyed by the state on citizens and subjects citizens and associations or organizations within the definite territory the people who lived in definite territory associations or organizations which is existed in definite territory on two things on these things the state enjoyed the supreme power that supreme power is nothing but the internal sovereignty internal sovereignty later we will cover different types of sovereignty again whereas here internal aspect of sovereignty is nothing but the internal sovereignty the internal internal sovereignty power of the state enjoyed on citizens and associations organizations which is in definite territory uh, whereas external aspect of sovereignty the external aspect of sovereignty enjoys the freedom the state enjoys the freedom from abroad freedom from other state freedom from other state so for example outside india if you take india as example india is a sovereign country india is a sovereign state this india enjoys the freedom from america from china from abroad whatever the country abroad that type of sovereignty is nothing but external aspect of sovereignty or external sovereignty so there are two aspects of sovereignty internal aspect and external aspect internal aspect the sovereignty power enjoyed the state on the citizens who resides in the state and associations organizations who existed in the definite territory and whereas external aspect of sovereignty is freedom from abroad freedom from other state so that is called external aspect of sovereignty this is a very very powerful and very important prominent element of the state you know that without the sovereignty the if there are three remaining people also there territory also there government also there but sovereignty is not there this body is not considered as a state that means without the sovereignty the area the people the government is not treated as state that's why sovereignty is very very essential it is like life of the state so four essential elements are completed if anybody ask how many essential elements are there in there in the state there are four essential elements like people territory government sovereignty where is in fifth one that is international recognition international recognition recently some political thinkers argued that international recognition also considered as one essential element of the state that's why we will discuss about what is international recognition is it essential element of the state okay international recognition there are two segment two parts international recognition one country for example if you take india it it is the state it is a sovereign state which is having sovereign power and which recognized from other state which is recognized from other state and other international associations organizations then only it is considered as a state this is the latest and recent argument about the essential elements of the state so finally what we concluded each and every state should recognize by international organizations or by other states that is why 
you can every state require other states recognition for example if a new state was formulated which required UNO recognition if UNO recognizes the new state then automatically remaining all those countries are recognized that new state this is the international recognition is it required or not required if country is recognized by abroad country they may render their help to us otherwise there is no aid and advice given by abroad so these are the essential elements of the state i hope you understood essential elements of the state there are four essential elements people territory government and sovereignty besides the four there are one more recent essential elements of the state that is international recognition thank you